What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I want to follow in the footsteps of tech reviewers and productivity gurus everywhere including some of my favorites Marcus Brownlee and Thomas Frank and talk about my everyday carry and what's in my backpack. And this is not just meant to be a self-serving kind of I think I'm interesting kind of video. This video is going to incorporate a lot of ideas and information that have been very useful to me both as a full-time engineering student and as a music producer who is trying to make the most of limited time. And also limited space. This is one reoccurring theme that we're going to see quite a bit is that I hate carrying things in general so I've kind of optimized my whole carry setup to carry as little as humanly possible. So starting off with my pocket, I'm rocking the one plus six. I've had this for a year now and this thing's still lightning fast, especially for a budget phone and I adore it quite a bit. And a couple of things to note, first of all, I'm running caustic on here and this is the easiest way to produce music kind of wherever I find myself without having to carry much. I've done a few videos on that that I'll link in the description uh, showing uh, songs I've made with Caustic and how I make them. And it's a surprisingly powerful tool that allows me to make music on the go without carrying much. So if I happen to find myself in a little break while I'm at the school library and I have a bunch of books on my laptop so I don't want to lug around like the Novation Circuit, I can just pull out the phone, start making music. The other thing that often lives in my backpack is the pocket operator. And this is the sampler one, the KO. So I can sample whatever I want into it, either via the line in or the built-in mic. And this is something I'll bring to school because you can just make little self-contained loops, beats, little musical ideas. And this is great because I can fit this in my backpack whilst having a bunch of textbooks in there. And it's its own self-contained device. So if I've been on the screen a bunch, if I've been you know, in AutoCAD or writing something. This gives me a break from the screen, gives me something tactile and kind of has that geek factor to it, which I really like. That was a bit of a tangent, but I wanted to get to music stuff as quickly as possible. The other thing of note on my phone is an app called Fast Scanner. And there's equivalents of this on iPhone, but essentially what it is, is it allows you to scan documents on your phone. You take a picture of it, tell it where the edges of the page are and it does some contrast stuff and flattens it out and you have a flawless scan of your document. And I don't just use this to send, you know, homework assignments to professors and whatnot. I use this to go as paperless as possible because if you know which textbooks you'll need for a day, you can only take those specific textbooks and that lightens your carry on load a bit. So that's at least a somewhat manageable problem. The big problem for me is notes. Like any responsible student, I take a lot of notes. And as an engineering student, I'm dealing with math and that kind of stuff, so it's all by hand. And so typically I end up with a bunch of binders all completely stuffed with paper by the end of a quarter or a semester. And the further you get into it, the worse the problem gets. The more papers you accumulate, the more you have to carry if you want to be able to reference your notes for, say, homework assignments, studying for tests, stuff like that. So my solution is to try to go as paperless as possible without actually needing to, like, take notes on an iPad or something because I don't want to pay for that. So what I do is every two weeks or so, I'll go through my notes, scan what I've got so far, and then stash them away in a folder somewhere, and then upload them to Google Drive as PDFs. That way, if I need to reference them, I can access them on my phone through the Google Drive app, or I can access them on my computer through Google Drive on the desktop. If I need to bring them to an open note test, I can always bring them back out from wherever I'm storing them, or if I'm desperate, print them back out from the PDFs. The other thing that facilitates this is my use of these pens. I got introduced to these at my first engineering internship and I've basically never gone back. These are Frixion pens by Pilot. They come in multiple colors and they are erasable and the erasing actually works. So the big advantage that pens have over pencil in addition to a smoother writing experience is the fact that if you use the flash on your camera while taking a picture of your notes, uh, with pencil there's glare. With these, since it's ink, there isn't. So when I scan with my phone and use the flash, I get these nice, perfectly evenly lit, contrasty, thick lines. And I also take my notes on engineering paper. All of this kind of combines to mean that instead of having notes that look like a line paper that was walked all over by a chicken that had just stepped in graphite, I have very clean, legible, and often color-coded scans of notes. And yes, I would love to go completely paperless with this, but as I said, I don't want to pay for a tablet, and yes, I feel bad about the 
trees worth of engineering paper I've gone through, but it's the compromise I've had to make at the moment. Something a little more environmentally friendly though, and also actually easier than the thing that's not environmentally friendly is a reusable water bottle. I highly recommend having one of these around. I'll fill this up multiple times a day from drinking fountains, water bottle refill stations, if the place I'm in has those. In my experience, this is a whole lot more convenient than having to buy water bottles. It's much cheaper, and of course, it's more environmentally friendly if you use this time and time again. This water bottle often goes in the cup holder of my backpack. And real quick, I'll talk about the backpack. I'll leave a link to it in the description because I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it's pretty inexpensive and pretty good for what you get. So this pocket here has another pocket inside there so I can put my laptop in here books and binders and whatnot go in here. Once again, I try to have as few of them as I possibly can. Sometimes I succeed more than other times. My water bottle goes in one pocket, a pocket operator or something like that goes in the other pocket. And then you've got two other pockets. This is a weird setup to try to film with. In this, typically I have things like um, some ibuprofen and etc. and migraine for emergencies. I've had chronic migraines since I was a kid and I've mostly grown out of them, but I still have that there just in case I need it. I have an Amazon Basics mouse. I have the dongle just permanently plugged into my computer so I can just bust this thing out, turn it on and immediately have a little portable workstation, which is nice. And then a uh, power bank from Anchor. And the nice thing about this, first of all, it's got two USB ports and it plugs into the wall. So it plugs directly into the wall to charge. And then if I plug it in and plug my phone into here, it works just as a USB to wall adapter. It works as both, which is very nice. Anchor makes good stuff. And then finally, my pens and my calculator live in here. I do have a fancier TA-84, but for most tests, this is what's allowed. And so this goes everywhere with me and it typically does exactly what I need it to do. And in here, in addition to pens, I have one emergency mechanical pencil. I try not to use pencils when I can because I hate them and they suck, but this is a number two mechanical pencil with plenty of lead in here, specifically for Scantron based tests. The other thing that you'll often find in my backpack is of course the Novation circuit. I typically don't bring this with me to school because often I'm carrying a lot of books and I'm not going to have the time to use it anyway since my schedule is pretty packed. I'm constantly studying or working at an internship or something like that. However, if it's during a summer and I'm only working or it's on a trip, this always ends up coming with me. As I've mentioned plenty of times in the past, I've made so much music in coffee shops, on road trips, uh, in little bits of time. This thing does fit perfectly in a backpack and I can just take it out at any time. And with the help of some earbuds, I'm immersed in my own little musical studio in my backpack. And also it does make me feel a little bit like a celebrity because typically if I'm using this in a coffee shop, probably about 50% of the time, someone will probably walk up and ask about it and I get to excitedly explain to them what it is and why I'm using it. The OP-1 will also travel with me on occasion, but I definitely find myself using it a lot less than this, which I was a little surprised at, like the OP-1's the fancier, more versatile device, right? But I find the circuit a lot more inspiring and because you can save multiple sessions on it, in a way a lot more versatile, at least as far as working on multiple projects is concerned. The final thing that I mentioned a second ago, these earbuds is a part of my actual everyday carry. You've probably seen these in videos before. These are a pair of Panasonic earbuds. They go for like eight to 10 bucks. I've had a pair of these constantly with me for like five years now, I believe. And since they're cheap, I don't mind beating them up a little bit. So I just wind them around my hand and stuff them in my pocket with my keys. You don't notice they're there. They sound surprisingly good. But the big thing, I know what these sound like. I know what these sound like really well. I've listened to countless hours of music on them. I've made a lot of music on these things. And I know that's a bit of a no-no. You want like high quality studio headphones, but because I know what these sound like so well, I've managed to make it work and I've managed to make some music that in my opinion sounds really good just on these earbuds. And having these in my pocket at all times means if I have these and my phone and maybe a pocket operator in my backpack, I really can make music anywhere. And if I'm not doing that, I can bust these out at any given moment and listen to a podcast or an audiobook and occupy time walking back and forth or doing menial tasks by being entertained or more importantly, learning something. That sounds like the perfect segue to an Audible ad and I wish it was, but it isn't unfortunately. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to watch a video on how to make music on the go for 
less money than you'd think without a computer, you can click or tap up over here. And if you would like to watch a YouTube video that YouTube thinks that you would like with YouTube on YouTube while you YouTube, you can click or tap down over here. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video next week. Peace.